Okay, good morning everyone. We had a little technical difficulty. We're not too much outside of the 10 a.m. start. So first of all, we're celebrating here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, World Metrology Day. Now today, we join the rest of the world in celebrating World Metrology Day. Now this is an annual celebration which showcases the contribution of metrology services to the safety and well-being of society. Now this celebration, really this annual celebration, was set in motion by what we call the, or what is called the META Convention. Now what the META Convention is, it's really a framework of global collaboration in the science of measurement. And so it, it facilitates consistency of measurement, measurement services, worldwide or globally. And so this day, May 20th annually, is designated as World Metrology Day. Now, for those non-technical persons out there, and we want to ensure that we have some amount of clarity. Now, we all know about meteorology. Now, not to get it confused, but meteorology, of course, that has to do with weather, and metrology has to do with measurement. And a simple definition of metrology, it's really the science of measurement. Now, I'll be your host today. My name is Maxine Fagan, and I am the Manager of Communication and Customer Service here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. And I am joined by our technical expert, Mr. Tomoki Burton, who is the Manager of Mechanical and Metrology Services here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. So he'll be our technical expert. I'll be asking him questions and he will be giving us some insight. So it's really a collaboration, it's really a conversation, if you will. And so it's instead of giving a, a presentation, so, so this is the format that this BSJ Live will, will have today. And so let me first start by asking you, Mr. Burton, thank you so much for facilitating today as we celebrate. Now we hear about metrology, however persons may not have a full appreciation of what metrology really is. We have the simple definition, the science of measurement, but give us some insight into what exactly is metrology. Okay, so as you mentioned before, that is the, the simplest of definition, the science of measurement, and I think it is simple because it is hard to really define what metrology is. So I think the standard definition of metrology is to really a long um, sentence, and it's a bit complicated, but in terms of what metrology is, metrology entails all of the elements of measuring. So from the definition of the, the quantity, which is done at, this, um, at the SI, which is the um, international unit, to the, um, the traceability of the measurement, to the measuring techniques used, um, to the units, um, to the measurement uncertainty. So the charge is, is a combination of all of, of this area. The charge is, um, that, that is what is called scientific metrology. But there is also um, legal metrology, which has to do with um, um, trade and how um, our um, citizens of a, of a country are able to um, be served with the right amount of quantity purchase. So in Jamaica, our example of legal metrology um, that is done by our regulatory body and what that they do is at the, the pumps and also on the scales where they will go and do verification of these measuring instruments. There is also industrial metrology that is done. Metrology, measurement work done within the industries. Okay, all right. So so just to, to kind of pull out what you just said. So, so basically, uh, it has to do with Precision with measurement with, con with consistency. Consistency, I would call standard 
modernization of measurement. Mm -hmm. So um, the sharp history is that, as you mentioned before, we talked about the meter convention. This was when the idea was born to basically analyze measurement into using the metric system. So before that, there was the imperial system that would be used. There are different types of system that is used. And I think most of the world now have um, adapted to using the, the metric system, so which is a decimal system, where it is a lot easier and it is um, it is defined more readily. It is that the units are defined on scientific principles. So those are the base units, um, and traceability is is um is defined in terms of how exactly you go about being traceable to the SI units. Okay, so so let's just, let's just, let's just delve a little bit deeper now. So for example, I am measuring a, a meter, so we were talking metric, right. right, a meter. So a meter of measurement in Jamaica, because of metrology, will be the same meter of measurement in Switzerland. For example, so so metrology facilitates that 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 consistency of, of measurement globally. Well, that is the that is the intention, mm -hmm. but it's uh it's work getting that to be um, as consistent, mm -hmm. meaning that the work in metrology is getting that definition that example mm -hmm. to be correct. Right. Right. So. Basically, my measurement system would have to be aligned with the measurement system in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And so, in, bo in, in both persons doing the measurement in two countries, the, if the system works properly, mm -hmm. then there should be an alignment with both measurements, if the system works properly. Right. So the intent of, of metrology, or the science of metrology, is really to get everything aligned. Everything, happens. right. I know our work at the DSG, I know what we would probably go into that um, later down, mm -hmm. is to do our part to get our system right in alignment to make that um, example to be true. Okay, wonderful. No, I, I hope you're learning, because I'm learning, certainly, and we want you to be learning for those persons in the audience that are non-technical, so they really want you to get a fulsome understanding of metrology at the end of this conversation you would have gained significant insight. So that is the intent. All right, so um, give me some examples, practical examples of the benefits of metrology. So, okay, so metrology, as, as mentioned before, going into this um, regime of standardization of measurements, there is benefit to that, tremendous benefit to that benefits quality in the manufacturing industry mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it also benefits you in terms of trade. So in terms of quality in the manufacturing industry, you want to make products to industry standards, right? And in order to make products to industry standards, you have to be able to can measure in order to meet these industry specifications and therefore you need a measuring system to be able to do this kind of measurement. In terms of um, trade, or your metrology institute um, or your metrology body would offer calibration services to these industries and calibration services of your instrument is a requirement for any kind of certification um, that these companies would be engaging. And as, as you know, certification is important in trade. Okay, absolutely. So I, I do know that you have different, I don't think we would term them as branches, if you will, of metrology in terms of the different um, measures or unit of measure. There are different, there are different quantities okay. um, that, that, we, that we use, and these are of different um, Units, I will call them the, the, the base units, we also have derived um, units. Mm -hmm. But the, there are seven of the what you call the base units, those are the base quantities. At the bare standards, we, 
following the terms of our metallurgy program, we do not engage in all, but we do offer some of these services. Okay. So in, in terms of examples, because I, I was actually having a conversation with some of our other chemical experts um, within the metrology and testing branch of the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, and I, I, I did glean some information. So in terms of so, so in terms of practical examples, because this conversation, we're not giving a presentation, it's a conversation, and we really wanted to, as I said, leave after uh, participating uh, through being uh, the audience, of course. We wanted to have a full understanding of metrology or some insight. So for example, all right, so I know we deal with volume and um, pressure and um, right. flow and those things. So, so, so audience, folks out there, now listen up. So let us say, all right, so you're gonna be pumping gas. So you're pumping gas, you go to a gas station and you're pumping gas. Now, just think about it for a moment. Metrology is at work. Metrology in real life. So pumping your gas, that would be volume metrology. So, right. Talk so, us about that. Okay, so you are, so let me just clarify that just, just a little. Yes. As mentioned before, the, the example of the gas, mm -hmm. what we call legal metrology, mm -hmm. and that is done at the level of a regulatory body, mm -hmm. which we do have here in Jamaica, which is the, um, the legal metrology department in the NCRA. Which is the National Compliance and and Certification. And Re right. Regu regulation yes, authority. Authority. Right. Right. National Compliance and, and Regulator right. Authority. So what they do is they do the verification of the pump. So this is a verification exercise, not mm -hmm. a contribution exercise. Mm -hmm. So what they would do is they would have standard measures mm -hmm. that they use to compare the volume dispensed from the pump mm -hmm. to the volume that uh, to the volume of their standard measure. Mm -hmm. So they can compare how much the pump is dispensing. And this is a legal requirement and this is done in order to make sure that the customers are getting their money's worth at the right amount that they, uh, that they have purchased. So that's, that's a regulatory activity, that's a legal activity. We at the Bureau of Standards Metrology Lab, we do scientific um, metrology. So we do calibration. Mm -hmm. So we we would actually calibrate the standard measures that the legal metrology team use for their work. Right. So, the, so in other words, the, the sort of equipment that the regulator would go out into the field and utilize to right. ensure that whatever volume of gases is pumped is actually right. accurate. Right. We at the Bureau would calibrate those instruments to right. ensure that when they go out into the field, to do their market surveillance activities, whatever it is that they're measuring, they can rely on the equipment to say that this is actually accurate based on the fact that it has been calibrated and our calibration services would support right. the, the regulator. So, their, are, so their, their, measuring, their standard measure mm -hmm. is traceable through our laboratory. Okay. So they rely on our standards, our competence and we know will be traceable to another body which is a which is of a higher measurement capability than us at the DSG. Okay. And, and other examples, um, ladies and gentlemen, would be uh, pumping your tire and, and that would speak to pressure. Right, so at the so if you can go into the service that we offer now. Right, so yes, right. Yes, talk to us about the, the services that we Okay, yes. so we actually have, in the mechanical branch, we actually have four metrology labs. And additionally to that, there is also an electrical um, branch that has, I would say, three metrology labs. Mm -hmm. So in electrical, there is the they do metrology. They do metrology in um, temperature metrology. Mm -hmm. So this is a calibration of temperature measuring devices, thermometers. Mm -hmm. The 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 um 
one that we would use, that is very common now in Jamaica, mm -hmm. but that is calibrated um, in that laboratory. Mm -hmm. um, there is the, there's also time and frequency, which is, which is actually on its way. It's not operational right now, mm -hmm. but this is the um, time and frequency laboratory. And there is also uh, um, uh, energy, energy um, calibration laboratory. All right, so let us... In the mechanical mm -hmm. branch now, we do mass metrology, which is the, a very um, common one in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. We do um, length metrology. We do, this is length measure, calibration of length measuring instruments. Mm -hmm. We do also flow and volume metrology. Okay. That is the calibration of the... the, um, the Water meters. Right, those and those things. Right. And we um, we also do force and pressure metrology. Force and pressure. Right. Okay. As pressure gauges, pressure instrument, pressure devices, mm -hmm. and so forth. All right. So let, let us let us kind of dissect that just a little bit more, so we can understand. So you mentioned the, the temperature um, lab or the temperature metrology services. Now, um, as a matter of fact, the theme for World Metrology Day is actually metro metrology for health. Um, what is it? Temperature? It, Measurement right. for health. Say again? Measurement for health. Measurement for health. So I have my team member who's backing me up. So the theme for World Metrology Day, Measurement for Health. Now, I want to just tie that in a little bit. Now, the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, of course, supports the health sector in the various services that we provide. But in particular, we're going to be talking about the calibration services that we offer. But I do know that we have an ongoing program where we are in fact engaging the health sector to introduce them to build awareness as it relates to our calibration services. So measurement for health, that's the World um, Metrology Day theme. And so let's talk some more about the calibration services that we offer and some of the things that we actually calibrate. Okay, so the genesis of this is that um, traditionally we don't see metrology in the health sector. Mm -hmm. Right, so as, as experts here at the Bureau of Standards and also um, throughout the world, we have, we have seen this, we have recognized this to be a problem and so we wanted to address this situation. Um, and so we, had, we started to look into this maybe several, maybe, maybe up to a decade ago, mm -hmm. where we wanted to get, get going or get off the ground a program to address the calibration or verification of um, medical devices um, that requires a high level or any kind of level of accuracy. And so we did our research. We went to different um, medical facilities and we did free of cost just to get the idea of the level of accuracy of speaker monitors of balances that are used, of micro pipettes um, and thermometers. And we found that a large um, percentage of these instruments being used were not calibrated. Mm -hmm. And so we approach the, the Ministry of Health and independent of that, we approve, have approached also the, the different health facilities um, independently to bring this to their attention mm -hmm. and recommend to them that they could begin looking into doing the verification of these or calibration of these devices it would help them in terms of their diagnosis. Yeah. Okay, so that, so that is that's really great. That's really good work that the, the Bureau is embarking on. And and calibration of course it, it, it checks the accuracy of these devices. So that is what right. calibration. So we've heard the term calibration and that is essentially what the program is about. It's about calibration of medical devices for that particular 
um, program. Okay. And so what, what the, the BSG is doing, if I'm just to summarize what you just said, we are engaging the health sector because we do recognize that it, it could have dire consequences if it is that the devices or the equipment that they are utilizing are not in fact um, producing accurate results because um, it should be appreciated that over time right. these devices you have regular wear and tear just like any other thing that you utilize. So right. in using these de devices on a daily basis um, they are subject to wear and tear and if it is that when you purchase the equipment new you may have some level of assurance in your mind that it is calibrated or it may not be calibrated. So in order to ensure that what, you, what you're utilizing in your patient care, we're saying to, to the, the sector essentially that consider the Bureau of Standards Jamaica as your quality assurance resource, if you will, because we want to ensure that you are in fact supported by your local standards body, which is the BSJ, we want to ensure that, you know, and just to the wider public, because we do have a responsibility or a mandate as the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, and we want to ensure public health and safety. And so we are saying to persons, whether you're in a public health facility or a private health facility, that we have these services that we offer. We have these calibration services, and there are several pieces of devices or equipment that we do calibrate. We want to ensure that what you are in fact checking or you're utilizing, you can rely on those results because can you imagine, can you imagine ladies and gentlemen? So you spoke about the SPIG, I call it SPIG because a long SPIG monometer, SPIG monometer is a blood pressure machine essentially. Okay, so can you imagine if you're taking those readings because I do know that um, among the population, we have a tendency for those um, lifestyle diseases, if you will. And high blood pressure, hypertension is one of those things that is very prominent in Jamaica. And in, in having persons doing that kind of testing or taking those readings, can you imagine if you're, what you're reading that you're recording and you're relying upon to diagnose that patient and to prescribe whatever course of treatment. If it is that those readings are not quite accurate, can you imagine? It could in fact have dire consequences. And you are not doing it deliberately because you are thinking that these instruments, some of them may be new, but then you really do not have that 100% assurance that the equipment is in fact calibrated. So the BSJ's uh, calibration services, we're saying, again, I'm just reiterating, that we are here to serve, we are here as a facilitator, and so we invite the public sector, the private sector, to utilize the services of the BSJ. And it is quite in tune with um, this year's World Metrology Day theme as well. All right, so I, I really thank you for that, Mr. Burton. All right, so let us talk about uh, the contribution of the BSJ to other sectors. So let, let's get some insight into a broader scope in terms of the different areas that we would have touched as it relates to our um, metrology services on the whole. Wait, um, well, well it, is, it is like we discussed, so those, as it is right now, the, well again, just to a small, um, a small history where a few years ago, the BSJ obviously was um, a larger body in terms of we um, included the, the regulatory um, body as a part of the function as a part of the um, One of the, the motives to do this separation of um, separating the, the regulatory function from the from the, the rest of the function of the BSD mm -hmm. is so we as a um, metrology institute would have greater um, ease to assist um, the industry. So there would be no really no conflict of interest um, involved because we obviously would not be doing any kind of policing mm -hmm. of those same customers. And so 
as it is right now, we are more open to assisting um, the different industry in terms of technical advice that is needed when it comes to um, measuring systems, when it comes to equipment, when it comes to calibration and the works. Um, currently, along with um, calibration of the devices we just discussed, mm -hmm. we also do offer um, some level of um, consultation to the different um, industries, which obviously we, we can't um, discuss those right now. Right, right. What we do as industry that we do. Um, food health, processing industry, industry, construction, construction healthcare, healthcare, you name it. Right. right. We yeah. will do offer um, that kind of advice to them. And, and just to, to give some additional insight into what you just said, and is there a question? Yes. There's a question here from Marsha Denny. If I have a digital blood pressure machine that I use at home, can I take it to the BHA for calibration? If yes, how frequently should I take it to the BHA? Okay, that's actually a very good question. Um, the the frequency of calibration mm -hmm. is really up to the the actual the instrument itself. So if you have a good instrument, it will be more stable for a lot of, but you would not know unless you have already started doing some checks mm -hmm. and so you have an idea of the stability of the instrument. For example, if you do two checks in that maybe two years and you realize that it's fine, mm -hmm. then you realize that, okay, maybe you don't need to do it that frequent. And so you can do maybe every two years or every three years, mm -hmm. but you need to have some data mm -hmm. in order to make a decision on the, the calibration frequency of any instrument mm -hmm. at all. And I, I do, I've heard that in some devices it is recommended once per year, depending on the manufacturer. Right, so you can, so that is where you start. Mm -hmm. But the BSG um, cannot tell you as a client how often you can calibrate your instrument. Yeah. We don't instruct them in terms right. of the time, but we recommend, we, we could make recommendations. Right, say there are, be, there are best practices. Best practices, right. so we would recommend perhaps annually or, or once every two years, depending on the frequency of use. Right. Because they, uh, we should be mindful as well that if it is that you have a particular device and you're utilizing that device very frequently. Now remember, we spoke before about the possibility of wear and tear. So if it is that you're utilizing a particular device very often, then clearly you would, have, you would be mindful that you would need to calibrate that device more often than something that is not being utilized as often. Right. So, they, so you, you have to be mindful of that. So we, we, we recommend, we guide, we give you the necessary information that you are armed with to then make an, in, an informed decision. So our recommendation would be perhaps annually, and depending on the frequency of use, or, or once every two years. But if it is, again, let me reiterate, if you have a device that is used frequently, then you, you want to consider that you may want to have that device calibrated more frequently. Well, I would, I would say, mm -hmm. so as, as, as I mentioned before, the, the rule of thumb is to have data mm -hmm. on your instrument, and that will that can decide how often you calibrate. Okay. So if you are able to get, say, consecutive data, mm -hmm. um, consecutive results, like say two years in a row, mm -hmm. even if the frequency is high. Um, if it is that your results are stable or within your required um, purpose, mm -hmm. you can look into extending the, the calibration um, frequency. Okay, so how will you check for those, um, the, the, the results that you speak of? You'd have to have it calibrated to do those. Right, so, so we, would, we would give you a calibration report with any calibration. Mm -hmm. And all a calibration is, is a comparison between the, the measurement from an instrument to a standard or what the measurement of instrument should be. 
and so you have an idea of the accuracy of the instrument. That is what the calibration is. Okay. okay. So they have found that okay, you send it in this year and it's fine, and you send it in the following year and it's fine, and maybe the following year is fine. Maybe, maybe you don't have to do every year. Maybe you can just do two year, and that will be fine. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So in terms of the information, I hope you're following. So we have made some recommendations, and um, of course, there's the only way you can have that data to rely on to make that informed decision is to have it calibrated initially. And so again, we have these services available. And let me tell you this, the services of the BSJ is not only for persons in business. We have uh, private individuals may utilize the services of the BSJ because we do have our preceding reputation when we, were, when we had the regulatory function Mr. Burke would have mentioned that before, and I just to to I, I I'm just going to address that just a little bit, just for clarity, because it would be remiss of me not to mention it. No, many years ago, the Bureau of Standards Jamaica we had an all-encompassing function where we had the responsibility for regulation as well as as a, as a facilitator. No, um, about five or so years ago, there was a separation of, of operations, if you will. And so that regulatory function, that, that policing function, no longer rests with the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. That is now the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority, or the NCRA. So that entity, that responsibility is now delegated to the NCRA. So that policing, the market surveillance that the Bureau is known for, that function now rests with the NCRA. And so the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, in its evolved role as a facilitator of business development and trade, our services are open to all. So it's not just about the big businessman, you know, persons who are exporting a small business, a micro business, a micro entrepreneur, can in fact utilize the services of the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. Well, I've often said it, what we want you to be considering the Bureau, as this, the Bureau should be in, in your mind as a micro entrepreneur. So let's speak to the micro, the small man, if you will. And so you want to think of the Bureau of Standards Jamaica as a quality assurance resource. So let us say you're making, you're making, you're making drops. You're making drops and you have started this wonderful business. You had a dream of starting a business. And it's okay, your talent, you can make drops like nobody else can make drops or grate a cake. And so you are producing a quality product. Now you want to ensure that when you send that product out in the market, that you have a quality product and you want to ensure customer satisfaction. So there are several services that the Bureau of Standards Jamaica can assist you with as a micro entrepreneur. We have our training services that we offer. That's one area that you can benefit from. You want to ensure that you know when you have your product out there, it's properly labeled. So we have our packaging services, and you you know you have to ensure that whatever it is that is said to be the content or the weight of that product, you have that quality assurance. And when you put your label onto your product, then your customers, and then you can evolve from this micro entrepreneur to medium, large, whatever it is that you will. You know, so we're just saying that consider the bureau, the bureau is for everyone in business, not just the, or even a, a private individual. Once you have a need for the services of the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, you can reach out to us. We are here to assist. We are here as a facilitator. And so, um, again, consider the bureau in your business, in your best practices, if you will. So Mr. Burke, I digress, but it was very important to convey that information. And even utilizing our metrology services that is also available to all, because in this COVID-19 environment, let's go back to the temperature metrology, we are seeing when we walk into these various business places, everybody's pointing at you. Pointing at you with what? A thermometer, this little gun. Small business, large business, Everywhere, nobody pointing these things at you. What, 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 what are they doing? They're, in, they're trying to safeguard themselves and their customers and their staff, etc. But consider this 
are those devices really accurate? Are they? So the man with the corner shop, and he is very responsible, and he has, he has this digital thermometer device. And you want to ensure that nobody coming into the corner shop has fever because you might have COVID-19, and you want to safeguard his staff. So I'm saying to that man in the corner shop, which is very responsible, utilizing his thermometer as part of his COVID-19 response, you can have that device, that instrument, calibrated here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica as part of our metrology services on this World Metrology Day. I am just passing on this information to you. You want to ensure that your thermometer, your thermometer gun is accurate. Mr. Burton, we check the accuracy of these devices in our metrology lab. So today, temperature, in our temperature metrology lab, so you can have that assurance that what you're utilizing is in fact producing accurate readings. All right, so let us get back for a moment to the metrology lab. Now I do know that we are what is considered a Caribbean reference lab. You want to talk to us about that? Okay, so um, as, as you know, in metrology, there are, there are lots of, we are part of a, a wider body in the region. Um, so the, the, the quality assurance body for the Caribbean region is um, CrossQ. Um, Crescu is, is and Crescu is an a Caribbean yeah, body, uh, body that, 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 uh, associated with CARICOM. Associated with CARICOM, right? That deals with quality. The, the arm of Crescu that deals with metrology, a part of your mission several years ago, was to um, basically come to some kind of collaboration within the region to to help to um, build metrology within the within the region and so this plan that they had involved um, assigning a, um, a reference laboratory in different areas and this was done because um, of the economy of the lots of the countries in the Caribbean are really small economy and so not every country can have all the different quantities at a high level and so it was decided that they would assign different labs to different um, regions or territories. And so Jamaica was assigned the reference laboratory for mass and volume calibration. And so what this means is that we are the highest level in terms of um, calibration of mass accuracy within the um, CARICOM region. I think us and children to be the various standards. And so we now have that responsibility to disseminate um, um, measurement traceability to the other areas in, um, in the Caribbean region. We also help in terms of training, we also help in terms of offering intercomparison measures, and we help in various ways, again, consultation advice and um, things like that. So that is just one of the um, recognition of our, our laboratory. But we also have accredited laboratory. So our mass laboratory is also accredited, and our volume laboratory is also accredited. And you know what accreditation? What does it mean to be accredited? So we are saying that we are accredited. What does that mean? So accreditation, put shortly, is just essentially a recognition it's an external recognition of our laboratory mm -hmm. to say that this laboratory can perform at a certain level. Mm -hmm. So this is a third party body, mm -hmm. which is a accreditation body that does their audits, does their assessment, look at our, look at our equipment, our system, our personnel, and say, yes, this laboratory is able, they are on the same level of what we expect, which is um, also of other affiliate laboratories throughout um, the world. So this is a recognition um, um, system to say that we are achieving at a higher level. Okay, so, so we can in fact claim quite accurately that we have world-class 
laboratory services, our labs here at the Bureau of Science. We move our several um, world class um, laboratories at the Bureau of Science. Indeed, indeed. Yes, that is, that is very good information. So I, I do know that we are learning quite a bit. We are gaining significant insight into what we do here, here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, especially as it relates to our metrology and testing lab, the, sort of the, the services that we provide, the fact that the labs are in fact accredited, um, majority of them, and they are in fact world-class facilities. And so this is to really convey to the public that listen, when it is that you, you, you choose to utilize the services of the BSJ, whatever results that are you know, disseminated, that is in fact comparable to any laboratory in the world based on the mm -hmm. fact that we do in fact have this level of accreditation for some of the labs. And so you can be rest assured that whatever you are, whatever what results that you have gained, and I know that these results, because of the fact that these labs are accredited, so if it is that you are, say, you know, in terms of the contribution to various business sectors. So if you're exporting, if you are, you know, conducting business in any area, any part of the world, whatever results you get from the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, you can take it just about anywhere in the world based on the fact that we do in fact have these world-class facilities. So this is excellent information. So, you know. Just a point of information from CrossQ. Yes. They are saying, yes, the CARIMET team comprising of the metrologists in our CARICOM countries have been working to build the measurement services and resources in the region, and that includes centers of excellence for different aspects of measurement in various countries. Okay, so this is in relation to the, the point about CrossQ right. made earlier. Right. Well, we did mention that it involves um, labs in all different um, so, so this yeah, point, ladies and gentlemen, is in relation to the Caribbean reference lab um, that was a, designation. A yeah. right. Right. They were just making a point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we, we thank them for that. So that it was in relation, as I said, to the Caribbean reference lab designation for the Bureau. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? No, just that. Okay. So we thank you for that. We thank you for that. So again, um, we just want to reiterate some of the, the calibration services. You want to list some of the, in terms of the medical, the medical sector, some of the, the different devices that we, we calibrate. I, I do have a list here. So uh, the list includes, well not, well not, it's not an exhaustive list, mind you, uh, but uh, thermometers, we did speak about that. Balances, scales, pipettes, spigmonometers, that's a blood pressure machine, autoclaves, cold storage units, and as I said, it's not an exhaustive list, but just to name a few of the um, devices that we do in fact calibrate. And again, the, the theme for World Metrology Day, measurement for health. So we want to just um, emphasize the support that we do provide to the health sector as a Bureau of Standards and an, as a national standards body. All right, Mr. Burton, you want to we're going to close shortly, but you want to, to say anything else in addition to what you have said before about the services of the BSJ, the contribution, how we support the regulators, that sort of thing. You want to give us anything in addition to what you have said? Um, well, just that um, we um, recently added the service of um, um, calibration of um, relative humidity. So that is a, I know that for a time in Jamaica, several um, places wanted that, that um, service and we were not able to, to offer it. And we are now able to, to offer that service. So that's that a service new um, relative humidity devices, right. devices that read um, relative humidity. So for example, uh, like for, what kind of device would you be looking at, for example? Um, well, some data loggers that, um, that are used in laboratories to measure temperature and um, relative humidity. Okay. So that is, um, that is, they are used a lot in processed food um, industry. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so this is um, a service that we, have, we started up with, I think, this year. Okay, okay, great, great. And, and, and there's something that came to mind that one of the team members had communicated to me in relation to the 
um, calibration services as cold storage units. So I do know that we're able to do what is called temperature mapping. So if, it, if for example, you have, a, you have a business and you have cold storage that you employ in terms of preservation of your product, and you have a room, you have a, a cold storage room, you want to ensure that every area in that space has consistent temperature. Because based on the, the nature of your business, your product, you, know, you want to ensure that if you place whatever product in this corner, it is this temperature, you place it in another corner, it is the same temperature. So we do offer that temperature mapping services as part of the support to industry. So I, I, I have to mention that one of the team members did Yes, that is another program in the temperature metrology laboratory. Temperature metrology, okay, yeah. great, great. So we are doing quite a bit here, ladies and gentlemen, at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. We're going to be closing this conversation now. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to send them through the social media space. And, and just to say that, you know, we are very happy that we had this conversation. So instead of having a a formal presentation, you know, we thought that if we have this sort of conversation style presentation, if you will, then you would be able to get some more insight than you may have gotten from a formal presentation. We invite questions. We do hope that um, the conversation that ensued would have been helpful in getting some insight into what we do here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica and into the um, calibration services that we offer through the metrology and testing branch here at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica as we celebrate this World Metrology Day and we have conveyed some of the services that we offer through our metrology laboratory. We invite you to partake of the services of the BSJ. We are here as a facilitator. As I said before, we are here to serve everyone, not just the big business. We're here for the micro entrepreneurs as well. We're here for individuals as well, as we continue to carry out our mandate as a national standards body. So I thank you, and I do wish you uh, the rest of the day, the rest of the World Metrology Day. Have a great day. If you want to reach out to us, you may do so through our social media spaces, um, our website, or in our email info at BSJ. You may contact us as well. Feel free to do so. We are here to answer any questions, any additional questions that you may have, any query that you may have. We are happy to assist. And so we're going to wish you a good morning still. I do hope we haven't been too long. And we thank you for joining us here today as we continue our celebration of World Metrology Day 2021. Thank and, and just a comment from CrossQ. Informative yeah. discussion. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. We have team, we have um, colleagues from the Caribbean joining us here in this BSJ Live. So we do thank you for taking the time out to be with us here today. Thank you.